So in this video, we're going to be modifying our chat app and we're going to be adding some peer to peer functionality. Specifically, what we're going to do whenever the server disconnects, one of the clients will automatically become the new server and every client that doesn't become the server will automatically try to connect to that client to keep the chat app going. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of code refactoring because at the moment we're creating our socket in our server class and we're creating our socket in our client class. But because those methods aren't in functions, they're not tied to any objects. Say for example, we're client and the server disconnects and we become the new server we're going to have to create a new server object but we can't reuse the same socket variable so we're going to have to put that into the constructor of our classes so to do that i just copy this variable paste it in here and instead of referring to it as self.sock i just refer to it as sock and then down here when we have a run function instead of having a separate function called run we're just going to copy this and we're going to paste our run function in our constructor just like this and then up here, once again, we have to refer to it as sock.accept, not self.sock.accept. And then we come down here and do the same for our client. And now because our socket is defined in our constructor, we have to pass the socket to the send message function so that it can use it. So we just set args and we pass a tuple with one argument, which is going to be sock. And we have to put that comma in to make sure that Python evaluates it as a tuple. And here we just pass in sock and refer to it as sock. And then down here, we refer to it as sock again. And we delete our run function for our server. So now what we need to do is we need to be able to store a list of peers, which is a list of people that are connected to the server alongside us. So we create a variable called peers and it's going to be a list. And every time someone joins the server, we want to add them to the peers list. And we want to tell everyone else that they've joined. And whenever somebody leaves, we want to tell every other person that's connected that they've left. But that way we can keep the peer list in sync. So here, after we get a connection, we're just going to say self dot peers dot append and we're going to append the address of the peer which is a zero because a is a tuple which is the address in the port and we only want the address so we're just going to access the first item of that tuple and whenever someone disconnects we're going to say self dot peers dot remove and we're going to remove their address from the list of peers and then next what we're going to do is whenever someone disconnects we're going to say self dot send peers to update the peers list of everyone who's connected to the server and then here, after someone gets connected, we're going to say self.sendPeers as well. Down here, we're going to create our sendPeers method, and it's just going to send the list of peers to all of the other people who are connected to the server. And we're just going to loop through the peers list and create a string. So we're going to create a string called p, and we're going to say for peer in self.peers. p is going to be equal to itself plus the new peer plus a comma for our delimiter. And once we've done that, we're just going to send the new list to all of the peers. So to do that, we say for connection in self.connections. And then here what we do is we just say connection.send. We convert our string, which is our list of peers, to bytes. So we just convert it to bytes. We say that the encoding was UTF-8. And before the string, we're just going to append on another byte. So we're going to append on another byte, which we do that by creating a byte string. And we just say backslash x11 which just means we're sending this byte at the start of the string. That way, when the client receives it, we can differentiate between the list of peers and when we receive a message. So now that we've sent the list of peers, the client needs to understand what it has been sent. So to do that, we just say if data, and we get the first byte of the data is equal to a byte, which is one one. That means that we received the list of peers, got peers. Otherwise, we'll just print out the message. So now if we save that, and we run it and we connect to the server. You can see the, ser the client got printed out, got peers because somebody just connected. You can see the second pair connected and we got got peers again. This pair also was told got peers. If this first pair disconnects, the second one will be told got peers because it received the list of peers again because somebody just disconnected. So we're sending and receiving our list of peers. And what we're gonna do when we run the server is we're just going to say server running. So what we're going to do whenever the server loses connection is out of all of the clients that are connected, they're going to lose connection, obviously. And one of them will then have to randomly become the new server. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a while loop. that's going to run forever and we're going to say print trying to connect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wait a random amount of time. And that's how we're going to decide which client becomes the new server because each client will wait a random amount of time and then it will try to reconnect to the server. And if it can't reconnect, since they all waited random amounts of time, one will become the server quicker than the others. So we're going to say time dot sleep and we're going to say it's going to sleep for a random amount of time. So we're going to say rand int between one and five seconds. So it's going to sleep for between one and five seconds, but we don't know how long it's going to sleep for. And what we have to do is scroll up and import time and then import our random function. So we're going to say from random 
import rand int. And before I forget, we actually have to store the pairs that we receive as the client because at the minute we've just printed got pairs, we haven't actually saved them. So what we're going to do, instead of printing out got pairs, we're just going to run a function called self.update pairs. And we're going to update the pairs with the data we received minus the first byte because the first byte was just to tell us that the data was actually the pairs that had to be updated. And what we're going to do is we're going to set pairs equals str pair data with the encoding UTF-8. That converts our data from binary back into a string in Python. Then what we do is we split that string on the comma, which was our delimiter. And then what we do is we remove the last item because our string ended in a comma, the last item in this list will just be empty. So we're gonna say go from the start of the list to the second last item. And instead of going to peers, what we're gonna do is we're going to say p2p.peers and we're gonna create a class called p2p with one item called peers and it's going to be a list. The reason for this class is because down here we're outside of any class and we can't access the peers variable in our client class if we're outside of it. So we have to have a class that can be accessed by the client class and a class that can be accessed from outside of any class. So now that we've stored our new peers, what I'm actually going to do down here as well is create a try block and we're going to create an exception which is going to be keyboard interrupt. And if that happens, we're just going to say sys.exit. Uh, the keyboard interrupt just means if you press Control c on your keyboard, then we're going to exit the program. So after we've slept for a random amount of time, what we're going to do is loop through all of the pairs. So we're going to say for pair in p2p.peers. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to create a new client object with the pair. And if that doesn't work, we're going to put in another exception for keyboard interrupt to allow the user to press Control c to exit the program. And then if there's any other kind of exception, we're just going to ignore it. And then what we're gonna to try to do after we've looped through all of the pairs and we haven't been able to connect any of them, we're gonna say server equals server. to become, And then we are gonna to try to become the server. If that doesn't work, then we're just going to print. And once again, we're going to accept keyboard interrupt to allow the user to press Control c whenever this is happening to exit the program if they want. And before we try to run that, what we're going to do is we're just going to delete this part here of the Python code because by default, what we're going to do is we're just going to run this loop. We're going to try to connect. If that doesn't work, then we're going to become the server. And in our peers list, we can have our default set of peers. So by default, we're going to set the default peer is us. All I have to do is type in Python 3 chat.py. It says trying to connect and it should shortly say the server running. Now you can see the server is running. Now I'm going to try to connect from this other client. It says trying to connect and then it's going to try to connect to the server and you can see it's just connected there. So I have this second client here. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to try to connect. And there you can see it's just connected. From the server, I'm gonna de I'm gonna disconnect. So I'm gonna press Control C. The server's gone, and now you can see the first one couldn't start the server, and we just have a problem actually. So I'm gonna cancel that. Neither of them could start the server because if I try to do it now, it's going to throw an error. So on the Python documentation, there's this line here: set sock option. And if we set this option, it will allow us to reuse a socket before it times out on the computer. So if we open our chat app again, and then we're going to go to the server, and we're going to paste that in there just to set that option, sock.set option. And in the client, we're going to do the same thing. And that should then get rid of that error. So now once again, the server's running and we've both of our clients connected. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the server. Now it's trying to connect on one server and it's already said server is running on the second one. And there, now we have a new client connected the client on the top window has just connected. And now if I was to run the old server one more time, what it's gonna do is it's automatically gonna connect. It's not perfect. You can see I sent a message there and it didn't actually send. But now if I was to send a message a second time, it sends. We haven't built the most robust chat app in the world. That was just due to our threads and why threads can be difficult to use. One final thing we're gonna do, this works because all of our clients and servers are running on the same computer. But if we were to connect to a remote server, we could end up in a situation where they all tried to become the server and it would all succeed because the only reason it doesn't work on this is because they're all running on the same computer trying to run on the same port. So to fix that problem or at least reduce it is we can use this really simple method I thought of. What we need to do is we just create an if statement 
That means there's a one in 20 chance that the number will be one, which means on average one in 20 clients would end would, would try to become the server, which means we get around that problem of every client trying to become the server. It's obviously not perfect, but for the sake of our tutorial, this should do the job. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. If you have any questions, don't forget to email me at francis at but that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.